hiking 100 miles across active volcanoes in the Canary Islands. It was time to up the ante and challenge myself like never before. I'll be backpacking across the Canary Islands, located in the Atlantic Ocean, 70 miles from Africa. There were two islands I really wanted to see, so I crossed off the remainder. This left me with La Gomera and La Palma. With active volcanoes, mountains a quarter the height of Everest and lush green forests, it would make for a challenging adventure that was needed. Oh, I'm Liam. The first island of La Gomera would get me acclimatised before I headed to La Palma. This is where I'd walk the route of the volcanoes, a challenge and ascent above the clouds with very little to no water. I will be self-supported with a pack filled with only the essentials. I'll be living alongside nature, experiencing life the way it was supposed to be. My knees were about to take a beating on this one, but I was ready for it. I left the rain and cold behind in Manchester and headed for the Canary Islands. It was a four hour flight, just enough for a nap. After an early wake up, I needed it. I got a short taxi ride into town and got myself some supplies for the adventure. Just some basics, I made sure to have enough water. I was on the island of Tenerife. My destination was La Gomera. That's where I'd be starting. The way to travel between the Canary Islands is by ferry. I headed towards the terminal, boarded and relaxed for a couple hours. I took a look around before setting off. This was a paradise. I contemplated getting a hotel, sitting on the beach, sipping cocktails for a week, but I decided against it. I'd be climbing the hills in the distance. It was nothing like I'd experienced before. Just made it to the start of this adventure. I'm in the Canary Islands and I cannot wait. It is so hot. It's 4 p.m. It should be cooling down, but it's not, and I'm loving it. Heading up a hill. Plenty of these coming, let me tell you that. Uh, volcanic landscapes. Just got off the ferry down there in San Sebastian. And I'm walking along just volcanic rock, lots of volcanoes. So, it's like a lunar landscape, look at this. Well, it's a massive change from what I'm usually used to. All the cacti around meant it was a harsh, dry environment. There's actually houses all the way up here. What? What a place. <laughs> Just catching my breath and I'm gonna make a conscious effort to just stop and take in the views because this one's special, you know? This is probably gonna be one of the hardest hikes I've ever done in terms of just incline and decline and weather. I'm carrying about four litres of water. <laughs> Resupplying might be quite difficult. I wasn't too sure. There wasn't much info actually on these islands. So yeah, winged it. So yeah, I got quite a heavy pack this time. 
I'm going to try find a flat spot once the sun starts to go behind the hills because it's just peaking right there. And I'll set my tent up, get a full night's rest, and then early day's walk tomorrow. Cannot wait. Nice views. It would still be nice and warm at night, even in the hills. The trail's been really easy to follow. It's just signposts like that. Gives you in kilometers how far you need to go to the next town. It's pretty well maintained considering you're in the hills. It's quite nice. I didn't even realize that's, <laughs> I was like, where's the horizon? And that's the ocean right there. It just blends in with the sky. Wow. So it's getting a lot cooler now. It's nice. I'm just waiting for that sun to go down. And then I'll try to pick a flat spot if I can find one and get some rest. It was an ideal camp for the first night. I had some food and I could even see the moon through the tent. I got some sleep. I'd need it for what lay ahead tomorrow. I'd hydrate with electrolytes. This would help me throughout the day. Brushing your teeth to a view like that puts you in a pretty good mood. Just got to the top of what I thought was the, the top of the hill. <laughs> and now this just appeared in front of me. It was only early in the morning and the sun was beating down. I did welcome the little shade the island had to offer. Sunstroke was enemy number one. That and dehydration. I see with this. Thank you to this rock. The terrain mixed with the climate makes it difficult, proper difficult. I'm uh, I am hoping there's going to be like a a town soon or like a, I don't know. I keep seeing these black hose pipes. I'm guessing it's like a water pipe. So maybe there's like fountains just along the way. I took a look at my maps and I seen a restaurant nearby. I made a beeline straight for it. You know how usually I stop at a cafe or a restaurant and I get myself a coffee? Well, this time it's beer and lots of it. That was one of the nicest beers I've ever had. I was just so thirsty. <laughs> I only had a little bit of water left, so managed to get both two litre bottles filled up. So four litres I've got now. And uh, I just got a large beer. Ice cold it was. It was just oh, exactly what I needed. So yeah, it's only 10am. My life has hit a new low. 
drinking at 10 a.m. So, the higher I go, the more greener the plants are. And I'll show you why soon. Towards the centre of the island, there was a forest. A forest like the ones back at home in England, only not as much rain. It was so different from the coast. I was loving the National Park. The trails were great. The views were spectacular. I took a couple minutes to myself. So the deeper I get into the forest, the more it looks like a jungle. <laughs> I'm just waiting to see like a snake now and then. If we sorted. We started and just following this route, but we are there pretty much near the center of the national park, and then we're heading over to oh, there we're heading up there. I just got to the top of a hill and I've just seen this. That is Mount Tady. It is a volcano on a neighboring island across the ocean that way on the island of Tenerife. Look how high that is. I was high enough now to be above the clouds. came across a small church with a village close by, the first one I'd seen for miles. Good job then, dogs are on chains. <laughs> crap myself, absolutely crap myself then. The mountain cattle used this route. I could hear the bells, I just couldn't see them. The riverbeds ran dry. Not a single drop of water anywhere. I was in luck. A weary traveller was in need of a cold beverage. And he got one. Es muy buena para tomar. Muy buena. Ah, gracias. Yo siempre, allí, Good. abro. <laughs> My friend was kind enough to fill my water bottles up. I don't think I've ever met a bad person on my adventures yet. getting quite late now not long of sunlight and I'm heading down one of these brancos it's actually amazing how they've just terraced all of the hill so there's just flat areas perfect for camping so hopefully I find a spot Look at 
that. What? That is a big drop. Whew. I'm just about to camp above the clouds. What? This is otherworldly. <laughs> Look at that. You see like a peak sticking out. I'm not lying when I say this, but that was one of the toughest days hiking I've ever had. The terrain mixed with the weather was a recipe for sweat. Sweat-induced pain. Oh. Well, it's over. As a reward, I've got that view. I'm just waiting for it to get a little bit darker because, as you can see over there, you can't really camp in Spain, so... I'm going to wait. And, uh, do the leave no trace kind of stuff. Make sure no one sees me. Ugh. So I've had two beers, two big pints of beers. And not much food. <laughs> I am hungry. I just didn't feel like eating because I was sweating so much and I, I was running out of water at certain times. I just didn't want to put salt in my body to, you know, it's hard to digest when you've got no water. So, yeah. That was tough, really tough. I've just been watching that view for about 10 minutes. Just made something to eat. Just been thinking about the day. It's been a tough one. Really tough one, but life does reward you sometimes. When you put the effort in, you get the rewards. Not for you. <laughs> I love life. So considering of uh, I'm quite close to two villages. There's one over there, over the Branco, and there's one just behind me there. I've found an ideal spot made up of it. Man, I feel good, really good. After some good rest, I was ready for the day. The sun had just come over the hills. I had a quick look at the signpost. I must have been the only person up. This part of the national park was pretty dense. There were trees I'd never seen before, different species everywhere. The sun poked through the canopy, it was magical. This forest is such a pleasant change. I've been really exposed the past couple of days. It's just nice to get in the shade. You can get the miles in while you're in a forest. Just keep going. The tracks are quite nice as well. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Birds are just waking up. I'm probably waking them up actually. So that down there is actually where I'm heading directly, near the ocean. Right there. This was the heart of the National Park. I couldn't believe my eyes sometimes. But I had a small problem. When I say small, it was huge. So, I am gutted. Uh, just using my drone as a controller there and for some reason it started to just descend and said returning home. Maybe it was a bug but it just got stuck in a tree and it'd be alright because I'd be able to climb the tree 
if it wasn't on a deadly slope like this. I am full of just crap all over me. And I know it's because like, I'm just good. It's somewhere up in there. I've tried to throw everything at it. I've tried to shape the tree, but it's just not coming down. I had so many good shots on it as well. Uh, I don't know. I can't even see it. It was beeping, but it's just run out of battery, so it's pretty much lost. I don't know what to do. I'll probably die if I climb up that tree. You can't really tell the angle, but it's just all the way like that to the bottom. Even coming down was a bit of a mission. <sighs> right. Just got to leave it. It's a good drone, that was. Good bloody drone. Uh, yeah, I've just been sitting down, looking at that view. As long as it makes up for it. Oh. My legs are shaking. I was like, I nearly fell down that hill. I'm full of crap. Literally just... I was like, I'm not losing this drone, but I'm about to give up. It's just too dangerous. It's only money. It's all right. started to descend towards the ocean. At this point I was acclimatised to the weather. My legs got used to the terrain and overall I was feeling pretty damn good. I knew once I hit the villages I was close. The sea breeze was brilliant. I actually passed a banana plantation. I'd never seen one before. I love putting a face to the end marker on my map. It always looks way different than how I imagine it to look. There we go then, first island done. I was gonna go for a swim and have a wash, but the waves are pretty big, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, there was them over there, which are showers, but they don't work. All good though, all good. On to the next island, I suppose. Just got off the ferry, it's like 10.30 at night uh, on the island of La Palma and it is very busy. It's a proper city. Don't know what I'm gonna do tonight. I guess we'll find out. So I just managed to have a quick wash, wash my hair. Uh, in the toilets over there, so I was quite lucky actually. It's, um, it's about 2 a.m. I'm just gonna try sleep on this bench, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge city. I didn't even realize how big Santa Cruz was. But yeah, it was uh, it's about a four mile trek outside of it, so I was like, you know what? I may as well just wait here till the morning. But. Uh, I'm not good, so I'm gonna get some sleep. The start point was located at the south of the island. A lighthouse just below an active volcano. I'll be following the fittingly named route of the volcanoes. I was excited for this one. Immediately, I'd spot a volcano. I couldn't believe I could walk here. It 
this right here then is where the lava flow was. It came, that crater got blown off apparently and it just created a, a flow and went all the way down towards the lighthouse where I was at the start. All of this in 1970s, it's only 50 years ago. So it's probably overdue another eruption, so I best hurry up. This was the first time I got a sense of how powerful the earth could be. I'd only seen pictures before. I felt so insignificant compared to it. It had to be respected. Here you could see the exploded crater. The first town to pass through was Los Canarios. The clouds clung to the town. It was nice and cool for the first time on the whole trip. I aimed for the hills and started my ascent. That's where we just came from, Los Canarios. And that's where we're heading. There were some ideal spots to camp at. I underestimated how hard it was to get on top of volcanoes. It was seriously challenging terrain. It's a, an exploded crater just there. I think. Oh yeah, that's the lava field. Runs all the way down inside. Wow. So I've got one rule while I'm on this adventure, actually two. One is make sure I've got enough water. And the other, I've just thought that now, is don't camp near an active volcano. That one right there. If I follow them rules and stick to them, I should be all right. This is amazing. Really steep, but just breaking through the clouds now. Every now and again, the clouds would reveal a vibrant blue sky. It's so difficult to walk on. It's just black volcanic sand on an incline. Especially when you've got weight on your back and you're tired. <laughs> it's tough. There are only a few views in the world that make you go, what the? And I think this is one of them. It's a mountain with a volcano on top of it. The main danger with volcanoes is not the actual eruption. It's holes like that. And if any pockets of gas escape and there are humans or animals in the vicinity, then you are done for. And I've took the obvious precautions, I've looked on the websites, uh, asked around locals. And usually if there are any gases detected, then they will close like a certain uh, part of the National Park off, but I've been lucky and it's been okay, so yeah, but there's always a chance. So, you just gotta, just gotta be careful, and it just comes down to luck, I suppose. Well, them holes, they look a bit sketchy, <laughs> so I best just hurry up and get out of here.
I didn't know at the time, but I was in a huge exploding crater. The whole landscape was sculpted by volcanism. 20 million years ago, this was a totally different environment, but now it's safe enough for people like me to walk along it. Being in the clouds made it difficult to see the progress I was making. On a clear day, I would have been able to see for miles and miles. Take the trees away and you could actually mistake it for Mars. Every flat bit of the trail was a relief. I was grateful for it. So, so grateful. Trail markers like this were painted on the rocks. I rarely had to get my maps out. starting to come down slowly but in this mist it is so cold I want to get down quickly it says we got 4.2 kilometers until the kind of the end of the first day really so yeah once to get out of the clouds I'll set up camp and get some food on because I am hungry right now it was nice to be able to see the terrain I was hoping the rainbow would give me some luck for the rest of the adventure. I'd never seen the start of a rainbow. At least I can cross it off my list now. I enter the forest. It wasn't raining, it was just the clouds making everything wet. I set up camp and made a hot meal. I can't actually believe waterproofs were being worn. It was like being back at home in the UK. So because I'm in the clouds, it's just constantly wet and just cold and damp. But the sun, it's right there. It's just trying to come through. I'm just going to keep walking until hopefully I, I just get into some sun. I can dry all my tent out because it just, it was just so wet last night. <clears throat> but number one priority is water. I've got about 700 milliliters left. I don't know where I can refill, so I'm looking good. Unless it's like a puddle. I've got my water filter, so yeah. Uh, I got some good rest. I camped on like a track like this, it was last night. It's the flattest part. Nothing special, but did the job. Quick update. Just found this tap, but doesn't work. This is the last water point until you head up to the highest point on this actual island at about 2,800 meters. Um, yeah, so there's no water up there. So I've got a bit of a dilemma. It's trickling a little bit. But I'll be here for hours just, you know. So I think the only... I'm gonna have to look at this logically now. Um, barely got any water so I'm just gonna have to go back down to the nearest town fill up and then come back up and then continue the walk like that it's just, it's just no water on this flipping island we're in the clouds there's a few puddles every now and again but not enough to drink so here we are so Rocky, 
De Los Machachos is the highest point, 20 kilometers away. Uh, the nearest town, El Paso maybe. Yeah. So let me get some water and then come back up. I read a small church in the village of El Paso had a fountain there, so this was my only hope really. The rainbow come through with some luck. The mountain was shrouded in cloud, it seemed to cling to it, it just didn't move. Just getting back up this mountain is an ask. Oh. Only if that tap up there worked, oh, I, wouldn't, I would have avoided just all of this. <laughs> right, let's get to the top. With full water bottles, I headed onwards. The views become the norm which is an insane thing to say, really. Every step I was taking took me higher than I'd ever walked before. I'm just coming up these stairs. I just spotted that. That's the refugio. So it's open to the public. And apparently it has water there too. Let me just show you this place then, so. It is good. Look at all that water, that is heaven. Just airing my stuff out, sorting it all. A little place to cook, I suppose. Just amazing, absolutely amazing. The rubbish bag. Places to sleep, bunk beds. Same again. Have a look at this. We've even got tea bags, cards. Medications, what? Cooking? <laughs> Refugio Punta de los Rockets. So we just had some food and a green tea <laughs> and I feel re-energized. So it's only 4 p.m. right now. So I'm going to do an extra hour just to keep going. Hopefully though, I end up out of the clouds because that was perfect there, but I just feel like I can do some more. Yeah, that was a great place. If, um, if it was about half five, 6 p.m. and I just ended up there, I would have stayed, definitely. But it's a bit too early. <laughs> the mountain pass is made for some wobbly legs. Luckily, I don't mind heights. If that was flat and I didn't have rocks sticking out, I would have camped there. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at this. So the aim is just hopefully get up there or just to get out of the clouds where it's drier and not as moist. I mean, look at that. It is silent.
up here on my own, probably the only person for a couple miles at least, I feel way safer than I do down there. Even though there's volcanoes that can erupt and expel quite deadly gases, I feel very safe and just at peace. Looking at that view. Amazing, absolutely amazing. <laughs> Above the clouds. This was hands down the best place I've ever camped. I got such a good sleep. How could I not? The morning brought clear skies, ideal for seeing what lay ahead. I'm high now, wow. Breathing is a, a bit more difficult than down there. So basically the hike, once you look over this rock, it just takes me around and you just follow the ridge line all the way down to the sea in Tazacourt or Tazacorte, I think you pronounce it. I mean, it doesn't look a lot, but I'm sure it's probably about 15 miles. So I'm looking forward to it. The highest peak I'll show you right now is pretty sure it's my land. So I've got some observatories just over there. There are a couple of peaks slightly higher. Uh, and over there it's about 2,400 meters. It got cold last night, about minus two. And a cloud came in. But hike this has been I'll tell you what I keep just having to look at the clouds <laughs> amazing So that telescope there is called the Isaac Newton Telescope. And countries from all over the world have telescopes and observatory equipment all up on top of this mountain because it, it's just so good. I think it's got dark sky status or some, some kind of status like that. Because it's majority, it's just above the clouds and it's great for stargazing and looking at distant objects in space so finally got up here i think the peak is actually still goes a bit further but it's high struggling to get my breath because i've just whizzed up here that's why i should have slowed down what a day Thousand three hundred and sixty six meters. That's not even the highest point. <laughs> the highest point 
is just where that cloud is. Wow, this is so cool up here. I've even got 5G. This was the highest point on the island. So from now, it should be just straight downhill. It's gonna be really tough on our knees and uh, I'm not looking forward to this bit. It's just straight. Like, imagine trying to get down that right next to the ocean. 17 kilometers, about nine or 10 miles, I want to say. So, yeah, let's get there. I am so fatigued, it's unreal, just following that. This is one of the hardest hikes I've ever done. Uh, I've got no fruit or nuts left, and I've got one camping meal. I'm starving. Luckily I've got water, so I'm all right like that, but yeah. Uh, it might be one more night on this mountain as well, so I'm gonna go hungry. You know, without any food or water, I didn't really want to spend another night on here. I just realised, I don't think I've had a coffee for like five days. What? I don't, I haven't, have I? I've had beer the first couple of days, I think, and then you just ran out of shots because it's so remote. I've also been like craving, I don't know, like, just don't ask me why, but... Do you know when you were younger and like your grandparents used to go to the local news agents and get you like a freshly cooked pie? Oh, I could do with about 10 of them right now. I'm starving. Like a steak and oh, meat and potato pie, yeah. And like a tea or a coffee. I'd love it. Don't ask me why. This was the first view of the finish line. Ooh. The trail was so loose on the foot, the amount of times I nearly slipped is actually pretty funny. Wow, are they really taking the absolute piss? I'm in civilization now and <laughs> now there's a tap. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> yep, cheers, Spain. Hey, you can see, I'm pretty sure. That volcano there erupted in 2021 and you can see all the black volcanic ash. It must have took out so many houses. 
people are still living there. It's just a huge town. That's madness. The end was in sight. All of these kind of tents have banana plantations in them. So many. I think the volcanic ash makes the ground fertile, that's why. This is killing my knees off. Oh. All the way down there. <laughs> Last bit, come on. There we are. That was one of the hardest hikes I've ever done in my life. That island, La Palma, you're insane. Nice holiday destination. I'm gonna get about 10 beers. I can barely stand up. But, you can see that. Canary Islands, I enjoyed it.